Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to paint this cute little bird. It's kind of like a little sparrow uh, with watercolors on Indian handmade paper. This was the second experiment I did with um, with this paper, and I decided on the first experiment, which was the flamingo that I posted earlier, um, that I loved working wet into wet on this paper. So what I did was basically used my number 10 round Aqualon brush, which is a very inexpensive brush. You can use whatever you have, really. And I kind of made a head and body shape with just clear water on my paper. So now what I'm doing is adding some yellow ochre and the paints that I'm using are the still the Yarka student grade paints uh, that come in tubes versus the Yarka student grade paints that come in um, like a plastic uh, palette kind of like Crayola. Um, it's not those I haven't used those so I don't know how those are but the tube ones are just fantastic uh, and so are their professional Yarka and White Knights one. They're, they're all good even the the student grade um, sonnet the uh, paints that are from that same company are fantastic. They just do good paint over there and very affordable in no matter what um, one you're choosing. And I'm adding a little bit of this burnt sienna color here and I'm just kind of um, sketching basically. I didn't I didn't draw anything to begin with on my paper. Um, I think that's what I really enjoyed about working on this handmade paper from India is that uh, I felt very intuitive and just like I could play when I worked with it. I switched to a small number six pointed round brush and I mixed up some ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to get this nice almost black color. I love how the pigment kind of spider webs when I touch it into the wet paint. When I purchased this paper at the art shop they said it was really not great for wet into wet techniques but I have to say I really enjoy it for that because there's a little bit of spontaneity and surprise when you do wet into wet in this fashion. Now the bird has a little little bit of a spottiness on its breast and I wanted to um, kind of capture that um, that feeling but sometimes when you go in wet on dry you get too stark of a feeling so by doing this wet into wet I'm gonna have a softer underpainting to work on top of. To keep the edges of the feathers and wings sharp I'm actually applying pigment on the dry paper and then letting it wick into the area that I pre-wet. So I do that a lot whenever I want to get a really crisp outline but I want it to softly feather in. It's just a great um, trick to know especially if you're a little timid about working wet into wet. You, you just when you wet your area don't wet right up to the edge of whatever you're painting. Leave yourself a little bit of a buffer so that you can go in with that pigment and make those crisp edges and then let the pigment wick into the center. So um, it's, a, it's a technique I really enjoy and encourage you to give it a try if you um, have been a little timid about wet into wet painting. A trick to getting um, a bird's feet to look realistic is to paint the surface that the bird is standing on first and then paint the feet uh, kind of wrapped around it. So that's why I'm putting this branch in first. I'm using burnt sienna then also that um, darker mix that I made with the burnt sienna and ultramarine and I can highlight it with a little yellow ochre if I want to. I like to skip around a lot when I'm painting and I grab some of that dark mix which again burnt sienna and ultramarine and I added some of that into the tip of the tail. I realized I needed a little bit more um, color and weight in that part of the bird and um, I do a lot of kind of pausing and looking and determining what else I need. So here as things feather out and start to dry I can see the shift that is occurring from darker to lighter which happens in watercolor anyway and I'm adjusting those values as I go. I'm also throwing in a few more branches to make the picture a little bit fuller and more interesting and I'm actually just kind of pulling this composition together on the fly. I thought the composition was looking too boring and stiff at this point so I just grabbed a big juicy brush and started flinging water at the paper and it allowed some of my uh, bird colors to kind of float into the background. I also grabbed some ultramarine blue and started to add it here and there and let it float around to give me kind of a cloudy wispy background. Again the texture of this paper is really important in getting the interesting effects that um, I have going on in this painting. I find that using a big juicy brush really helps me loosen up, um, especially if a painting is looking a little too stiff and tight. And so that's why I did the background with the blue with that chunky brush and also the yellow ochre and the leaves and the little red uh, berries here. I'm tapping all in with that three quarter inch oval wash Princeton Neptune brush. That's a great brush. Um, anytime you want a brush that acts like a natural hair brush but is cruelty free, that's a great brush and you can find it pretty much worldwide. 
I let the background dry and now I'm going in with that number six round and the mix of burnt sienna and ultramarine, the nice dark mix on the dry paper. And I'm putting in some details such as the eye and I'm sharpening up the beak. And I'm pretty much just kind of looking around and adding any of the little details that I think this painting needs. Cause at this point, everything is very modeled. Everything is very soft um, and a little bit faded because it's dried. And this is the kind of way I pull it back around to getting a nice sharp image. So don't be afraid to do wet and wet backgrounds because you can always pull it back when you go in to uh, to add your details. These are the spots I was telling you about on the bird's chest that I didn't want to be too stark so I kind of did some wet and wet underneath there and now I'm redefining the feathers, the uh, wings rather. So just use a light touch when you go in um, with your detailed layers because it's going to look a little bit stark. It's, you don't want to overdo it. It's going to be look quite distinct when you go onto that soft background with a nice sharp colors, but you'll be able to fade edges and soften things out as you go. Just take your time and enjoy the process because that's the whole point. Remember, when you're trying a painting or I mean a new paint or paper for the first time, you got to give yourself some slack. You have to um, embrace it like a child would embrace a new toy and just learn about it and have fun with it. So I could tell that the overall value was too light for this bird. So I just went in with some burnt sienna. I started to apply it in the back. Sometimes when I go to put a color down and I realize I have too much on my brush, um, I will go and kind of dab it here and there, other places where I know I don't need so much. And um, that way it just keeps me from having to wipe my brush on a paper towel and remix and waste paint. It's it's just something you'll get the more you paint, the more you realize, oh, this brush is too wet for this. I'm going to go do that. Or I have just enough paint left on my brush to do this. And you just skip around and I know it doesn't probably seem very um, logical when you're watching me do it but the more practice you get the more um, those kind of little um, you just learn how the paint works and uh, you'll be able to do that does that make any sense probably not see this is the problem with uh, with just kind of playing and then going in afterwards and trying to make a tutorial of it it's like oh what was I thinking when I did that you know I wasn't thinking I was just feeling so here I'm putting the feet on the branch remember I said you know get your branch in first or get whatever surface your bird is gonna stand in first and then put the feet on it because it just makes it a lot easier to um, to kind of balance it and make it look natural. And then I'm look, kind of thinking, okay, where are the patterns on the bird? Where am I going to see feathers? And that's what I'm putting in at this point. Any place that I have re-wet and repainted, um, if I paint on top of that now, it's going to soften and kind of uh, uh, feather out. And any place that's still dry, I'll get a nice crisp line when I go into paint. And if I need to spread some paint around, what I do is I clean my brush, I blot it so my brush is just damp, and I pull that color around where I want it. So um, just be careful if you're going in there and you want to put um, you know, you just want to soften a little color that your brush isn't super wet. You just want to gently urge those colors to go where you want them. A second ago, I painted some yellow ochre into the head area, and now I'm using the bevel scraper on the back of my Aqualon brush to scrape in some kind of gestural feather lines in both the head and the wings and the back. So um, depending on how dry the paint is, if it started to dry a little bit, when you scrape in with the bevel edge, you'll get a lighter line. If it's really wet, you'll get a darker line. So by letting a little time elapse between your scraping, you can achieve darker or lighter depending on what it is you want. And now I'm painting in some little red berries because all of the uh, big juicy berries that I put in with a big juicy brush all kind of faded into the background and kind of blended together because it was wet. And I'm putting shadows on the berries with some ultramarine blue. And when it mixes in with that red, it does kind of like darken it up a bit. So I thought that was a pretty nice shadow. And then I'm just flicking on some red to kind of give the hint of other berries um, either in the distance or... Um, you know, just kind of out of focus. Again, I'm just refining a little bit, um, making sure my edges are crisp enough on the bird. And I blotted the back just to lighten it up a little bit. And really, you know, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you give this bird a try. Please don't be afraid to experiment and play with your paints because that's really how you learn. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.